But this was a lot of fun, like I said, I really enjoyed it, blah blah blah. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my most surprising books of 2020. I very rarely have 2020 releases on my channel unless they are review copies sent to me because I do not like buying books at full price because I'm a cheap ass. So I always wait until I can find them at the thrift store. So yeah, a lot of these are not new releases but they are just books that I read in 2020 that I found to be the most surprising that I didn't necessarily think that I was going to enjoy as much as I did so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> These are also in no particular order they're just the first 10 that I could think of that I've read that surprised me. So the first one that I have is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Pedro and this one is probably like the most surprising one for me on the list because I have said in many videos that I am not the biggest fan of fantasy just because fantasy books really intimidate me and I just don't have the brain power to follow all the characters and all the different plot lines that go on in fantasies. But this one I really really liked. It was so addictive. It was a lot of info dump at the beginning but I found the info dump to be very interesting which usually I'm just like okay I don't care and like flip through it real fast and don't really get the whole gist of it but this one I was very intrigued by also phoenixes fuck yeah I'm also a big fan of when characters seem to have nothing to do with each other and then all their timelines kind of like intersect and interweave together and then they all relate somehow I like to call it the valentine's day trope I have no idea what it is actually called and I actually asked on twitter what people thought it was called and nobody knew so I'm just calling it the Valentine's Day or like the intersecting timelines, plot lines, whatever you want to call it trope. But it has that and I was a big fan of it and it's just really entertaining. I have yet to read the second book in the series. This was a book that almost made it onto my top 20 books but I just decided to put it onto my most surprising list instead because I had way too many favorites this year so it was very hard to narrow it down but the next book I have is The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. I knew I was going to love this book but I didn't know that I was going to love it as much as I did. This is another one that was very close to being on my top 20, 20 books. This basically follows a girl named Tierney James who lives in a county where when the girls turn 16 they are sent off to like a cabin in the woods where they are supposed to get Get their female energy out because people think that they have like magical abilities. So for an entire year they are sent out to this cabin in the woods where they are actually hunted by poachers who kill them and sell their body parts to the black market and if you do not return to your family then they're actually like shunned and those that do return end up being married off into the village but they're all changed in very drastic ways and it's like the story of that. But this book is so fast-paced and addictive and has so many underlying messages especially when it comes to like girl on girl hate. It was like an examination of women's rights as well as just the idea that women are pitted against each other right from birth basically. We're taught at a very young age that we need to judge each other and just be at each other's throats and this book kind of argues that and tries to talk about how like that does not need to be the case and that we all need to be empathetic towards one another and I just really like that. I was also a big fan of Tyranny. She was not perfect which I really liked because a lot of main characters in YA are just like this perfect snowflake character and this was not what Tyranny was. She was just so fierce and she was very loyal and and stood up for what she believed in which I really liked but like I said I did not think that I was going to like it as much as I did. I also heard that it's going to become a movie so I am so stoked for that. I have no idea if that's actually like a true thing or not but I'm like fingers crossing that it actually does become a movie because it sounds so freaking good. Next up I have The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. This is solely on my list because me and Daniel Page as a writer do not vibe together. I read her Dorothy Must Die series and I hated it. I read her Stealing Snow and I hated it but I think because this had a co-author I enjoyed it a lot more and I have no idea why that's the case but it is what it is. This book follows a sorority of girls who also happen to be a clan of witches and they're hiding a big secret and trying to make sure that nobody finds out about it but secrets are coming to light and it's just a lot of fun but I actually am really glad that I gave it a chance even though it was Danielle Page it was a lot of fun and I really like the mystery of trying to piece together what happened all those nights ago 
this is actually not released yet. It's coming out sometime January 2021. So maybe by the time you see this video, it will be released because I'm a late poster. But I definitely recommend if you want like a fun witch book. Next book I have is Rebel Bell by Rachel Hawkins. I had such low expectations for this book, which sounds really bad, but I don't know why it just gave me all fives that I wasn't going to enjoy it very much, but it actually really surprised me. It's about this debutante who is named Harper and she is about to be crowned homecoming queen and she takes a trip to the bathroom where she is attacked. She discovers that she has these abilities that she had no idea she had and she finds out that she is something called a paladin and she is given the task to protect her biggest enemy enemy David Stark and it kind of takes off from there. I was not a fan of Harper at the beginning of this book. She was very annoying and I didn't like her at all but as the story progressed she has a lot of character development and it just kind of works for the story. The plot was what really shone for me though. It was very interesting and I was instantly intrigued with trying to figure out what the heck was happening most of the time. Like I actually read this in one sitting which I was not expecting to do when I picked it up but it's so fast paced and thrilling and you just need to know what's going to happen next because it's kind of really out there and not what you expect, but I will say that the series definitely goes downhill after Rebel Bell, so if this could just be a standalone, it would be way better because the second and third book were just not needed. The yeah. next book I have is The Devouring Grey by Kristen Lynn Herman, and this was surprising because it came out with a lot of like very average, a little bit of negative reviews. I had a feeling that I was going to like this book, but this is another one where I didn't know how much I was going to like it when I started it. The atmosphere is super spooky and eerie which is right up my alley. The whole backstory of this town and the four founding families really drew me in. I was just really intrigued with trying to figure out the mystery behind everything. I just became very invested in these characters and the four teenagers that the story follows and their backstories because they all have very different backstories to bring them where they were. The sequel came out this year and I still have yet to pick it up and I'm very intrigued because you're left on this huge cliffhanger. I just wasn't expecting to be so invested in these characters. At the beginning of the book, a lot of them kind of annoyed me, but as you keep reading and the story progresses and you learn more about their backstories, you just become so attached to them and you just want to protect them from all the dangers that they're facing, but I definitely need to check out the second book in the series because I need to know what happened to these characters, but yeah, super surprising to me. Next up is Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. I read the program this year and I was a big fan of it, so I wanted to check out another one of her books and I didn't really expect to like it as much as I did, but again, I really liked it. So this is another one that has a lot of underlining tones about like misogyny and women's rights and it basically follows a girl named Mina and the girls of the Intuitive Academy where they are taught for their entire lives that their whole purpose of life is to be obedient to the men of the world. But when secrets about the school and what goes on behind closed doors start to come to light, the girls start to question this authority and it's like the story of that. As a reader, it was so blatantly obvious that what was going on in this academy was wrong and just shouldn't be going on but the girls were so used to it and it's all they ever knew that it was like you wanted to scream in their faces that like this should not be happening you guys need to like do something about it but you also like just want to protect them at all costs but i also really loved the friendships in this book because all the girls were so protective of one another this is another one that has a sequel that i haven't read yet which i really need to do because i need to see where the story progresses because again you are left on a cliffhanger which obviously it's a series but i just really want to know what happens to mina and the rest of the girls but yeah this is definitely an underrated book in my opinion and you guys should definitely check it out if you haven't already it's actually really surprisingly good. The next book that I have is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I don't often read a lot of romances on my channel, but when I do, it's usually enemies to lovers or friends to lovers. This is an enemies to friends to enemies two lovers. The banter between Pepper and Jack, the two main characters, was a lot of fun. I like how they had a relationship online but also face-to-face -face as well. I also just really like that their couple name is Pepper Jack, like Pepper Jack Cheese because it's about like a grilled cheese company and like, I don't know, it was really cute. It was a lot of fun. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did and I found myself giggling for most of the book which I definitely did not think I was going to be doing with this book but it's very, very cute so definitely recommend. The next book that I have is This Martyr Coil by by Emily Suvada. 
This is about a girl named Katarina who is the daughter of Lachlan who is like the lead geneticist in the world. There's a deadly virus going around the world. Lachlan is in charge in creating the genetic code that is going to be made into the vaccine to stop this virus. Katarina and her father are separated for two years and a soldier shows up at her doorstep named Cole who states that her father is dead. He bears a message that Lachlan has finally cracked the code but an evil corporation called Cartaxis is actually after the vaccine and so she needs to work together with Cole in order to protect the vaccine before this corporation gets it. It's like the story of that. The book starts off very slowly and it's very info dumpy and a little bit boring honestly but once you hit about like the 20% mark it really starts to pick up and I became so invested in the story and these characters and what was happening to them. I found the science in this book to be so interesting. It's all about like genetic codes and hacking into the body through these panels that everybody has. I ended up reading the second book, This Cruel Design, which was also really good. There is also a third book in the series. So so I need to pick that up because I'm very invested in finding out what the end game of this series is because this one ends off in such a cliffhanger. The second one, like, I have no idea what's going on now and it's just like confusing but intriguing at the same time, you know what I mean? But it was a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed it very fast paced once the action actually started. The so. next book I have is The Red Queen. This is by Victoria Aveyard and everybody knows what this is about so I'm not even gonna waste your time in telling you because it's a very old series but I just read it in 2020. This this book is ultimately very predictable. You know where you're gonna end up, you know how the story is going to progress, but it's a lot of fun and it's really entertaining and I couldn't stop reading, which I did not expect. I've seen a lot of reviews about it saying that it's like every other book in the genre, which again, I agree with, but still lots of fun. I was just invested in these characters and the whole idea of the silvers and the reds. I was so curious about them. I am actually currently reading Glass Sword because I just want to know what the heck is happening in the book because you're left on a cliffhanger. Although it was very predictable, it also took a couple of turns where I didn't see them coming. I'm just a big fan of like books with like the resistance and like uprisings, like the Hunger Games. Big fan. Okay, I'm done with this. And then the final book that made my most surprising list of 2020 is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I had very low expectations going into this because of all the negative reviews that I was seeing online, but I actually really enjoyed it. It's about a lot more deeper topics than I thought it was going to be about. I did not expect this book to delve more deeply into like abusive relationships. I thought it was just going to be like a cute romance read, but it was a lot more than what it was advertised as. I also really liked how the focus wasn't solely on the romance aspect of it. There was also side plots that followed both of the characters, which was really enjoyable because I thought I was diving straight into just like a fluffy contemporary romance book, which was not the case. So actually very surprising and definitely liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Alright everybody, so those were my most surprising books of 2020. Let me know down below some of your most surprising books and if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!